The Assassin's Creed franchise is massive and every game that has been released since the beginning has its own unique selling points, but none of them are perfect. Of course, some of these titles have more complaints than others, but in this video, we are going to be going through the worst parts of every Assassin's Creed game. Going back to where it all began, Assassin's Creed was released all the way back in 2007, so by today's standards, it's not going to be perfect. The biggest complaint is the pace of the game, and this splits down into multiple areas. The combat itself was very slow and repetitive, making the entire game feel boring. Not only that, but parkour was also slow, making missions feel dull and not as interesting. And and of course we cannot forget the distance that you would need to travel in between each city when there wasn't anything to do but despite these points it was still good enough to kick off a massive franchise assassin's creed 2 this was the beginning of something different within the series and had a massive upgrade. The game introduced a lot more, not just within the assassin's terms, but also managing a homestead and business. These were very impressive for a game released in 2009. Ubisoft also heard players' complaints about Assassin's Creed and tried to improve upon them by creating some amazing missions within Assassin's Creed 2. The problem is that you weren't able to replay them. For open world games, the ability to replay missions is crucial and Ubisoft did 99% of the work. They would allow you to go into the main menu, look at your previous sequences and see what missions you were able to go through before, but you were not allowed to play them again. The only way for you to get access to these missions again was if you restarted the game from the very beginning and went all the way back through. Most players, when asked about ranking all Assassin's Creed titles, would put Assassin's Creed 2, as well as a few others which we will be going through, as that god tier. But they will always highlight that you weren't able to replay missions, and this was a very annoying problem to have, especially when some of these missions were just absolutely amazing, especially back in 2009. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood was the beginning of the yearly release of Assassin's Creed games. Brotherhood was released just one year after AC2 in 2010. The worst part about Brotherhood was that it only included one city and there was way too much open space. A problem which most players would say about today's titles. But remember, this was back in 2010. The Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 just wasn't good enough to run massive games, so they did have to be limited. But with Brotherhood, they still tried to make a fairly reasonable sized city, but there wasn't that many activities to do within that large space. It's crucial for an open world game to feel alive and immersive as you go around and explore what is on offer, and Brotherhood just did not have that. This led to players just playing through the main story and leaving things there, as the world had nothing significant to offer. Assassin's Creed Revelations finally bringing the Ezio story to the end, whilst also tying in the first Assassin's Creed. This was supposed to be the ultimate game, but still, there was something that players did not like. This was the new type of side missions that they tried to bring into the game, especially with the complaints in Brotherhood that there was nothing to do within the open world, but they brought in tower defense activities. These activities were hated by players and many considered them just a waste of time and got in the way of what they really wanted to do play through the main story as Ezio. Most saw this as a AAA game company just trying to bring in something that you would expect to go and see on mini clip. And in all honesty, it brought no positives to the game, whether that be through gameplay, narrative, or anything else. Things that you associate with Assassin's Creed is stealth, parkour, assassinations, and they could double down in all three of these areas, and this tower defense side mission had none of it. And I say side missions because it was able to be used as a side mission, but you would also see it pop in into some of the main missions as well, when players really just did not want to do them. Assassin's Creed 3, the first title in a very long time, which included the main character, which was not Ezio. The complaint though, is that you didn't play for Connor for hours. You would need to go through the whole intro of Assassin's Creed 3 playing as his father, Haytham. Now with this, you don't just play a few missions with him. This goes on for three sequences, which also adds up to there being hours of gameplay. 
if you were just to go and do the main missions, not any of the side activities which are also available, but just the main missions within these sequences, it adds up to around about three to four hours. And that's if you did things incredibly quickly. All of this when the main character that you want to be playing with is Connor. And because Connor also has some additional moves with parkour ability that Haytham simply does not have, it also means that once you do finally get to play as Connor, you will also need to go through additional tutorials, which can also last for several missions, adding on a few extra hours of gameplay. Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag is seen as one of the more popular titles within the franchise. It's definitely up there with Assassin's Creed 2 and Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Heard. Being able to sell on the open seas is great and even inspired pirate games not just within Ubisoft but also other game development teams as well. Overall amazing but the thing that stands out which isn't so amazing is that there is a certain type of mission which takes up approximately 20 to 30 percent of all missions within the game. These are Talon missions. This actually started the meme that Ubisoft doesn't do anything with Assassin's Creed. They just keep on rinse and repeating the exact same mission over and over again. And it was noticeable within a game where you could sell the open seas that for a lot of the time you would be on land just following someone around. Now, there's certainly no problem with having this as one or two missions within a 20 hour gameplay session. But when you have it for 20 to 30 percent of the whole entire story, it's just not good enough. Assassin's Creed Rogue is a bit of an awkward one, and this is probably its biggest drawback. The game was never considered a substantial release within the franchise. At the time of the release, the next gen consoles were also being pushed, this being PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Assassin's Creed Rogue simply didn't have a high enough budget to be pushed to these next generation consoles. They were pushed to the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. And this budget meant that loads of things suffered because of it. There was no graphical advancements compared to what we got with Assassin's Creed Black Flag. It looked exactly the same. There was also a lot of assets and resources which were reused in a way of saving money. And overall, the world was very small to explore. Assassin's Creed Unity was released in 2014 as the first major Assassin's Creed release for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. With this, there was a lot more promises because technology is now there to actually help and push the game forward with storage as well as processing power. Ubisoft highlighted the new black box missions where you can have multiple entry points to assassinate your target, as well as the new and improved parkour system which fans love to this day. But unfortunately, the release was not as smooth. This goes down in history as one of the worst releases for any Assassin's Creed title, simply because of the amount of problems with bugs and glitches that were there on the initial release. You can't even type in Assassin's Creed Unity without coming across many articles, many images, many memes highlighting the problems that did exist right at the beginning. Assassin's Creed Syndicate. This was the first title which was based in London and fans have been asking for this for a very long time and finally it was happening. They were excited for all the parkour opportunities, all the targets that you can assassinate and of course the new way to travel. This was with carriages. This was supposed to be the new way to travel and they would play an integral part to multiple main missions as well as side activities. The issue is that the handling was incredibly poor and if you were able to get on top and actually start controlling, eventually you'll get to a point where you're traveling down the street and all of a sudden it would bug or glitch out. Most players tried their best just to parkour around the city, especially considering that was the smoothest way and most entertaining way and they did try to avoid using any of the carriages, but there's some times where it just could not be done. They were used as part of main missions, so you were forced to use them. There was actually big complaints, especially on the release, where main missions would require you to use a carriage, but players could not use the carriage, so they were stuck. Ubisoft kept on pushing title updates to improve this to fix the issue, but every single one that they pushed, it just didn't seem to do anything, or at least it may have fixed one problem, but created a new opportunity for a new one to arise. This kept on happening for months. And with the release of Unity, as well as Assassin's Creed Syndicate, both having problems on their release, 
that's where Ubisoft decided to take a bit of a break. After a few years, Ubisoft released Assassin's Creed Origins, which promised to revolutionize the Assassin's Creed franchise. They were no longer interested in pushing narratives 10 to 20 hours in length, now they wanted something a lot bigger. This had fans split right at the beginning, but gradually Ubisoft slowly started to bring them over until the release. This time the release was not buggy and glitchy, there were a few here or there, but that was expected with a new title. The big problem this time around was the grind associated with Assassin's Creed Origins and its size. We've already spoken about within previous Assassin's Creed titles, there were some missions which were constantly repeated and just made the whole game very dull and boring. Now imagine that on a much larger scale with there also being XP which you need to grind in order to level up as well as finding resources that you can use to improve your gear. Now it's the case that you need to keep on going through those missions over and over and over again until eventually you reach a substantial level. Now to be fair, things were going to get a lot worse with years to come with Odyssey and Valhalla, but this really was the start of Ubisoft going down this path. When in previous titles, even though your armor and your weapons that you used were still important, it was more about the story associated with it and not actually you grinding to get to a certain point for you to be able to progress through the missions. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Pretty much with Odyssey, they take the negatives of Assassin's Creed Origins and pretty much makes them a thousand times worse. This is the complete transition from what fans used to know and love about Assassin's Creed to it being a full RPG-like game. One of the most popular types of missions within Assassin's Creed games was always the stealth missions that were associated with them, and stealth missions are virtually non-existent within Odyssey. This really makes the game feel out of place within the franchise and not appealing to a lot of the original audience. For most long-term fans, if they were to put a list together of the best titles going all the way down to the worst, Odyssey is down at the bottom. And I'll be honest with you, I don't think Odyssey is a bad game, I just think it's a bad Assassin's Creed. It incorporates nothing from what made the original Assassin's Creed great. And finally, Valhalla. Assassin's Creed Valhalla has lots of content to play through. Not only that, but there was also additional expansions which arrived later down the line. The idea was that players was always left with something to do, even if they were able to get 200 hours into the game. And well, even though that sounds like a good thing on paper, it really isn't. Assassin's Creed Valhalla was just way too big. The story alone takes over 60 hours to complete, with the three major expansions each taking 10 hours to complete, and then there's additional side content on top with pretty much everything. Out of the whole franchise, Valhalla has the lowest audience retention. The amount of people that bought into the game right at the beginning compared to the amount of people that actually finished the final mission is a very low percentage. And even though Valhalla as a title is insanely profitable, it does mean that for Ubisoft's point of view, they got developers to work on certain missions, certain content, which players never experienced. And this is normal for a lot of games, just not to the level in which it was within Valhalla. And that's why with future titles, Ubisoft are aiming to make them a lot smaller. You'll still have extra content on the side which you can go through and that will add up over time. But the main story itself is going to be about 15 to 25 hours in length. That will boost audience retention for the amount of people that can start to eventually finish. And then if they want to play on more, they'll go through side activities. But speaking on Valhalla, this was a massive problem. It's not the only problem with Valhalla, so if you do want to see my full analysis of it, there is a video on screen right now. If you click that, it will take you directly to that video, and we will go through all my problems with the title itself. There's quite a few. So click that, and I'll be over there with you in just one second.